In today's video, we're going to uh, discuss linear differential equations again, but this time with a little bit of a surprise later. First of all, let's solve a, a linear differential equation now. A linear DE is of the form dy over dx plus p of x, y equals q of x. Now, we don't see it anywhere here. It could be an exact uh, equation. We will learn about it later. But uh, we can, can we actually uh, make this into this? Well, first of all, there's dy and dx over here. We can divide dx on both sides. Now, what we're doing here is not dividing by dx, is that we're basing the derivative of y. Uh, now, we put it with respect to x. So the derivative of x with respect to x, which is this, is just 1 at this point. So we can safely say that uh, we've divided it, but it doesn't really make sense. In... But you will see. So we put dy over dx here, plus, since this is just 1, that cancels out. So y tangent x minus cosine x equals 0. Now, there's dy over dx here, there's y, and there's a function of x, exactly what we have in here. So with that, we can use the de, uh, linear de uh, special integrating factor here, but there's still this cosine x here, not to worry, we can transpose it on the other side, and we will get dy over dx plus y tangent x equals second, uh, sorry, cosine x. Now, the integrating factor or the special integrating factor, whatever you call it, is mu of x equal e to the integral of the p, p of x dx. In here is the companion of y in here. So there's, and in the previous video, I've discussed why this is the formula. So you can watch that. So this is equal to e to the integral of the companion of y here is tangent x. So we put tangent x here. And if you remember, the integral of tangent x dx is ln of second x. This is great because e and ln cancel each other out, leaving us with secant x as the special integrating factor. So now we can use this in order to solve this linear de. Secant of x, then dy over dx, plus y secant x tan x. And cosine x times secant x is just 1 since secant x is 1 over cosine x. Now, this is the result of a product rule because the definition of the special integrating factor of a linear DE is uh, based on the product rule. So this is the product, uh, the product rule. So y and then secant x and then d over dx. If you check, uh, if you check implicitly, uh, yeah, you will get this. So that's good. And then on the other side is just one. Then we integrate both sides with respect to x. The integral of a derivative is just itself. So we can cancel this and that out in order to get y secant x. On the other side, we have x plus c. All right. So here you can, you can multiply both sides by cosine in order to get uh, y equals x cosine x plus c cosine x, but it's up to you. Uh, this is I did this because... It would be a function of uh, y with respect to x, which would be uh, great. So that's a, that's a linear differential equation that's linear in y because we the y is a dependent variable. Now let's look at something else. How about this one? It says you're linear in f of y. We will learn how to do that later. But how do we get around solving this first? So earlier we had we had the companion of uh, y here as p of x uh, here yeah so dy over dx plus p of x times y equals q of x we need to find this y so where is this y in this maybe it's this one over x times x squared is indeed x so let's put everything together uh, let's remove the parentheses so like this, cosine y dy 
plus sine of y over x dx minus x dx equals zero. Hmm. Should we should we base everything off of y? So it's uh, dx over dy to get rid of this, but this doesn't make sense because this would be x times dx over dy, which is not linear. Hmm. How do we make this a linear differential equation? Hmm. Interesting. What if uh, instead of dividing it by dy, because the dividing it by dividing it by dy would make it nonlinear? What if we did it with dx? So we based the derivative of x. So it's not dy over dx here, dy over dx, and dy over dx. This becomes cosine y dy over dx. This becomes let's uh let's put one over x to the side, and then just put sine y here, and dx over dx is just one because again, the derivative of x with respect to x is just one. And then this let's put on the other side. This is just going to be x. Now what do we have here? Cosine y dy over dx. Does that look familiar? Well, if you studied implicit differentiation, this is exactly the derivative of sine y with respect to x. And if to recap, the der this, the derivative of uh, this is cosine of y. And then you need to multiply it by the derivative of the inside because of the chain rules. So you need dy over dx here, which is exactly what we have there. And let's rewrite everything. Let's put uh, the sine y up like this. This is actually what's happening when we do when we do this notation. This is actually what's happening. So what do we have here? Well, if we look earlier, uh, realize that uh, this is the linear uh, form, right? Well. Who's saying that this y can't be a function? Which is, what if this is acceptable? What if this entire thing is linear in sine of y? Would that be invalid? Would that be illegal? Well, let's see. Oh, if if this is indeed sine of uh, uh uh linear in sine of y, we have we have to find mu of well the x is still the independent variable, so we have to find mu of x. That's going to be e to the what is the companion of sine of y? It's one over x. So one over x dx. This is e to the ln x, and e and ln cancel out, we get x. Let's multiply x on the up. So x d sine y over dx plus, well, x times 1 over x is just 1. So that leaves us with sine y equals x. And because of the product rule, we know that this indeed equals x times uh, sine y and then the derivative of that. Now, if you check, this is... This is indeed how it's formed. So x times the derivative of sine y, which is d sine y over dx, plus the uh, derivative of x is just 1 times sine y sine y. And let's put x on the other side. Well, that'd be correct. Oh no, this would be squared since we multiplied x to both sides. Okay. So now from this part, we integrated uh, this with respect to x. Uh, let's put some parentheses here. Uh, derivative integral cancel each other out. This becomes x sine y. This becomes x cubed over 3 plus c. So from here, we can multiply both sides by 3 in order to get 3x sine y equals x cubed plus c remains a constant so we can still put c in here and that's the answer
So it is possible to find a linear in f of y instead of just linear in y. And if you're wondering if this is valid, you can check it using the non-exact method, which will be discussed uh, in a later video. But this is indeed valid. There's nothing stopping us from doing this. So what about this one? e to the y times sine of y plus cosine y dy plus e to the y sine y minus x sine x equals zero. Now this sets off some alarms. This specifically. e to the y sine of y plus cosine of y sounds like the derivative of e to the y sine y. What's the derivative of this? Well, first of all, let's put my method here. Then cross. So e to the y, derivative is e to the y. Sine of y, derivative is cosine, cosine y. So we get e to the y, cosine y, plus e to the y, sine y, and then dy over dx. This is also e to the y, sine y, plus cosine y, dy over dx. So we have a confirmation that this is indeed the derivative of e to the y sine y. So let's base, uh, base the entire d of, of uh, x since there's dy and dx here. So let's divide by x. We're not actually dividing. So e to the y, then sine y plus cosine y, and then dy over dx. And since dx over dx is just 1, we can remove the dx that there. Plus e to the y sine y minus x equals 0. Now we all know this is d over dx of e to the y sine y plus e to the y sine y. Let's put the x on the other side like that. So now the uh this is a linear is a linear d in e to the y sine y so x is still the uh the independent variable so we find the special integrating factor with respect to x which is e to the power of what's the partner of e to the y sine y it's just going to be one so we'll just put the x here and our sif is e to the x multiply e to the x on both sides, we get e to the x times d over, so d e to the y sine y over dx plus e to the x e to the y sine y, which makes it equal to x e to the x. This is guaranteed to be product rule situation. So we get e to the x times e to the y sine y, and then we put the derivative sign in here to indicate that this is indeed the derivative equals x e to the x. We integrate both sides with respect to x, which honestly is the hardest part of a differential equation. So we uh, cancel, cancel this out. So we get e to the x times e to the y sine y. We can combine the exponents like that. And this we can use integration by parts. I'll just use the di method to get x e to the x. So one layer down, one zero, stop. And then e to the x here, e to the x here, and then uh, diagonals, x e to the x minus e to the x, which is x minus 1 e to the x. So you get x minus 1 times e to the x plus c. That's going to be your final answer. You can, uh, you can simplify this further if you want. e to the y sine y may be equal to like x minus 1 plus c e to the negative x. But honestly, this, quest, this answer is good enough. And that's going to be it for this video. I hope, we, I hope it's a bit different from uh, the normal linear. I found it interesting when I found it uh, earlier this evening. So I'll see you in the next video.